Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 108 of our trip around the United States. We finished up our short days in Omaha and Lincoln, and now we're ready to get back on the road and start covering some miles. We have three days left in Nebraska, and all three of those days are definitely going to include road marches. We're starting this morning off in Wahoo in front of the Veterans Memorial at the courthouse. And what a Veterans Memorial this is. A fantastic tribute to our troops and an amazing way to start another day. From here, we have a 330 mile route. We're gonna push just a little north outside of Wahoo, and then from there, it's a westward march all day. Once we finally get to the ground we've already covered, that's where our day is gonna end, and we're gonna get staged and ready for tomorrow. We've got several Veterans Memorials up on the list today, as well as some highly favorited geocaches. The weather's in our favor, and everything is looking like it's set up to be a great day. So let's get out on the trails and not waste any time. Come on, let's go. I know I'm only speaking for myself here, but there is nothing quite like getting a geocaching day started off at a Veterans Memorial. And the one here in Wahoo standing proudly outside of the Saunders County Courthouse is pretty spectacular. The memorial includes tributes to all branches of service, an honor roll of the fallen, a listing of the conflicts in which the veterans served, and recognition of veterans groups of Saunders County. Each of the statues around the memorial symbolize a service member from each branch of the military. Each one is in a different pose from a combat situation or standing guard over their fallen brothers and sisters. A very nice tribute to our troops and a great way to get the motivation we need to get our day rolling in earnest. Just down the road from the Veterans Memorial is a pretty good geocache located at the Saunders County Historical Society Museum. While trying to track down the answers needed to open the cache, you can visit a depot, a caboose, a post office, ag building, church, and schoolhouse here. There are interesting places to hide your geocache, and then there are interesting places to hide your geocache. Let's do this. Doesn't smell so bad after all. Yeah, look at that. Cool stuff too. It's always great to see when a geocache is loaded to the max like this with swag. What? A four-star terrain geocache on a muddy slick slope? No, I don't think so. I'm gonna skip it. Oh, oh, oh. May 2001? Yeah. Okay, maybe we should go out and hunt this one down after all. Let's see what we got going on in this classic geocache here. Nothing but a logbook, but you know what? It's an oldie. There is one thing that always seems to hold true in geocaching though. When you're making your way to the geocache, you always find the most difficult way possible. But when you're making your way away from the geocache, you can always find the trail very easily. It's like magic. The Jim Cluck Memorial Railside Green seemed like the perfect opportunity to get the dog out of the car on a walk on a beautiful trail in the park. And it was a lovely walk down the tree-lined trail, which led us straight to a caboose featuring a micro. Well, it was a nice walk down the trail anyway. There's a much easier one in town. This one, they can keep. Now this is a much better alternative. There, bison on a fence. Nice and simple. I don't mind looking over the whole fence. It's way, way better than the train. No, thank you. The Veterans Memorial in Blake was dedicated in 2014. With this one featuring a special tribute to the Nebraska Army National Guard Specialist Blake Kelly. I definitely have a love-hate relationship with tanks. Every tank I saw along my route, I put on the route so that I could drop by and have a look at it. But like many of them, this one's a micro. I guess it's just that kind of day. We're gonna give this five minutes and then we're out of here one way or the other. Three minutes and stop the clock. This kind of hide for me will only get about five minutes. Do you log a DNF if you only give a five minute hunt? Go ahead in the comments and let me know. For my part, if I'm not giving it a serious search, I'm not gonna log a DNF, I'm gonna move on. But if I go to a spot where there's a geocache hidden and I really give it my all and I look around and I spend a good amount of time and I'm, I just feel like there's nowhere left to search, at that point, I'll DNF it. But normally when I show up to a cast like this or the train that we just did, if I give it a cursory once over and then leave, to me that's not a DNF. It's more like a did not attempt. I gave it a once look and I'm like, nah, I'd rather go find something more entertaining. I'm telling you, some days just have a flavor to them. And apparently, 
Today's flavor is going to be micros on trains and tanks. But we're already here. We're gonna start the clock with five minutes and go. Having to search on the train for a micro aside, this is actually a pretty cool spot though. Three minutes again, still made it. Seriously, I appreciate any high the cash owner puts out because in places like this, they're few and far between. But for anybody thinking about hiding a geocache on a train, I assure you, they have hiding places that can fit things bigger than this. There's lots of spots that can fit lock and locks easily. Magnetic key holders, I don't think there's a lot of geocaches out there who get excited when they're looking for a micro on a train. But I know I get excited when I see the listing is at least a small or a regular. Oh boy, there sure are a lot of veterans memorials on today's route. This is a great change of pace from what we were seeing up in the Northwest where there wasn't much of anything at all out there. The Nance County Veterans Memorial was dedicated in 2008 and in its center features a depiction of the Marines raising the American flag on Iwo Jima during World War II. There are seven walls flanking the flag raising, featuring a thousand bricks, each with the name and rank of a different veteran ranging from the Civil War to the Iraq War. Supposedly, there is actually a geocache at the Veterans Memorial, but it has a string of DNFs going back for over a year, and I've already had too much fun with tanks and trains this morning to go try and find something that's most likely not there. There are some geocaches in the community who live for caches like that. They will hunt and hunt until they've either resolved that there's nothing there, or they'll spend an hour or two and finally make the find. I'm normally not one of those unless needed. I'm in the game for the travel and the adventure. I enjoy fun geocaches, I enjoy going to interesting sites, I do not enjoy needles in the haystack, and I definitely don't look for geocaches that probably aren't there. I skip those unless there's no other option. Coming into St. Paul means that you need to become familiar with the legacy of Grover Cleveland Alexander. Known as Old Pete, or Alexander the Great, he was an American Major League Baseball pitcher who played from 1911 through 1930 and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1938. And this small town is very proud that this is the place he called home. Now that's pretty darn cool. I would definitely like to sit down there and play a game. And this geocache is listed as a regular. It's been a long time since we've seen one of those. All right, let's fire up the grill. We got an ammo can for dinner. Gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. All right, just one more tank to be featured today, and then we're done with these, I hope. Ready to take on another tank find? Not me, this one is totally different. What do we have here in this little alcove? Let's check it out. We may have something. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, another ammo can. And the real metal kind too, solid. Love it. And just like that, the sun is setting over another beautiful day in Nebraska. Well, travelers, looks like that's another day finished out here on the prairies of Nebraska, and it turned out to be a pretty darn good day. Every geocacher has their own style and their own things that make this game go around for them. We all see it a little differently. First and foremost, I want to make sure that I say thank you to every single cache owner who has hidden a geocache out there that we've been able to find, or not, find along this trip. Your efforts make a difference in the community. But like I said, we've all got our different opinion on geocaching. When I'm in an area that's target rich and there's a lot of geocache options around, I always opt for things that look like they're more fun, maybe interesting containers, scenic sites. I personally have no love for those needles in the haystack. Micros on trains and tanks are definitely not my game, nor are bisons and pine trees. And somehow, some way, that's pretty much what most of the geocaches today were. Better to have those to find than nothing at all. So by all means, if that's what you want to hide out there in the community, you go for it. But if you see a train out there and you go to yourself, there should be a geocache on that. First, ask yourself, could it fit a small? 
could it fit a regular before you jump to that magnetic key holder or <laughs> goodness gracious the nano just think about it we've still got two more days out on the road in nebraska and it looks like it's still going to be a pretty good time out here can't wait to see what it has in store like this video subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates and we'll see you out on the trails